Hello everyone. Welcome to A plus PI. This channel is all about complex numbers. And in this video, we're going to be simplifying an exponential expression with complex numbers. So we have one half minus root three over two I to the power root two I. And we're going to simplify this expression as much as possible. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. If you like algebra, number theory, and trigonometry, go ahead and check out my other channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S. So let's get started. To be able to simplify this expression, we're gonna to need to talk about complex exponentiation. In other words, if you have a complex number to a complex power, what is that supposed to mean? In the case of real numbers and especially integers, we kind of know what that means, right? Whenever somebody shows us or we come across two to the power three, that just means write the two three times and multiply and that gives you eight. So when the base and the integer, the exponent are both integers, it's fairly easy. What happens if the exponent is a rational number like one half? Then this just means the square root. One third means the cube root and so on and so forth. What if there's a negative number in the base? That's a different story. Then you're not talking about a real number anymore. So that's different. What happens if the exponent is irrational, like two to the power root two, then you can definitely approximate root two by using rationals. You can write it as an infinite polynomial and then so on and so forth. So you can basically write a series that will approximate, in other words, its limit would be root two, and then you can kind of go from there. These are all kind of easy cases, but with the case of complex numbers, one example would be something like i to the power i, which I made a video about, by the way, you can go ahead and check it out if you wanna know what that looks like. But in the case of complex to the power complex, things get really, really complex, okay? So let's see how we can handle this. To be able to simplify this expression, we're going to take advantage of Euler's formula because Euler is the greatest, he is awesome, by far, he's the best, so, we're going to use that. So, in other words, we're going to write this complex number in polar form. What does that mean? Whenever you have a complex number in standard form like a plus bi, it can also be written in polar form by looking at two things. First of all, you plot the number in the argand plane. Argand plane is basically, you know, the same plane that we know of, just a fancy name, when you express complex numbers as points or vectors. So in other words, our coordinates are a comma b. Suppose they're both positive in this case, to keep it simple. Of course, this number z equals a plus b i is represented like that. But at the same time, there's a trigonometric aspect because this makes an angle of theta and its distance from zero is called r or the absolute value. So r is the absolute value and if z is a plus b i, then its absolute value would be the square root of a squared plus b squared from the Pythagorean theorem, because this would be a and this would be b. Some people write this as bi because it's on the imaginary axis, however you wanna write it. I'll write bi, okay? So, in other words, when you have a complex number like this, a plus bi, it can be written as r times e to the power i theta. In this case, i theta, represent an interesting expression. This is why Euler is by far the best, is because he came up with this beautiful, beautiful formula. e to the i theta can be written as cosine theta plus i sine theta. And you can see this in Taylor series. Now, if you distribute and set it equal to a plus b i, you're gonna realize that, okay, a is equal to r cosine theta, b is equal to r sine theta. And if you divide b by a, you get tangent theta, which is b over a. So all of that information hopefully will let you plot it and you know express it in polar form, which is this form right here. That's what we're gonna do to our base. What about the exponent? Once you do something to the base, you don't need to worry about the exponent that much. Why? Because it'll be taken care of. And in this case, it's imaginary, so what is your guess? What is this number gonna look like? Complex number to another complex number. Let's talk about that, okay? So, whenever you have something like z to the power w, it can be written as e to the power 
W L N Z. Of course, now we need to talk about the complex logarithm. There are multiple values. So we write ln z, ln of a complex number, as ln absolute value of z plus i times the argument of z. In this case, that happens to be theta, but you got to be careful because theta is the principal argument. And then, of course, you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi because when you add 2 pi to it, you're going to realize that it brings you to the exact same point. So you are allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. In other words, if you write this as ln r plus i times theta plus 2 pi n, provided that theta is the smallest angle, uh, which is called the principal argument. Okay, so we can express the log of a complex number like this. This will be helpful because we're going to convert our exponential to a complex exponential, or we're going to express it using Euler's number and the natural log of a complex number. Okay, ready? So we have, what do we have? I forgot. 1 half minus root 3 over 2i to the power root 2i. So the base is going to be z in this case. So we need to worry about writing z as a complex number or polar form. But let's just talk about ln 1 half minus root 3 over 2i. You probably realize its modulus is 1. So the absolute value of 1 half minus root 3 over 2, because these numbers should be familiar to you, right? I mean, they are like cosines and sines of something. So that's 1, which means ln 1 is going to be 0. So it says the absolute value of ln of the absolute value, which is 0, plus i times the argument. That is the most important part. What is the argument for this number? Let's go ahead and plot it. What is that going to look like? 1 half is going to be here. And as you know, root 3 over 2, absolute value, of course, wise, root 3 over 2 is greater than 1 half because root 3 is greater than 1. So it's going to be like this, okay? Its real part is positive, imaginary part is negative. So we have a negative angle. Uh-oh. If you reflect it, you're going to get the positive version. And you probably realize this is pi over 3. But this is negative pi over 3. You got that? Why don't I use 5 pi over 3? No, you don't want that. You want the principal argument to be between negative pi and pi. You got that for certain reasons. So it's going to be like this then, ln 1. So this will be negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. And this will be 0 because ln 1 is 0, right? You can probably just forget about it. And there we go. This is the natural log of our complex number. And then we need to multiply it by what? ln z. So let's go ahead and do this. 1 half minus root 3 over 2i to the power root 2i is e to the power root 2i times ln 1 half minus root 3 over 2i, which is this one right here. So now we can write this as e to the power root 2i multiplied by i times negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. Uh-oh, surprise, we get i times i, which is i squared. One thing that you should never forget, and check out the lecture videos if you're new to this, i squared is negative 1. Great. So that gives us a negative 1, and that kind of turns into something like this, e to the power of negative root 2, multiplied by negative pi over 3 plus 2 pi n. If you distribute the negative, you're going to get e to the power root 2 pi over 3 minus... 2 root 2 pi n, but negative n can be turned into another integer k. So now we can write it in a slightly nicer form, root 2 pi over 3 plus 2 root 2 pi k, where n and k are both integers. Of course, they have to be, right? So that's the answer. Now, what happens if k is equal to 0? You get the principal value. So our number, which is complex to a complex power, will be super duper real. That's the real deal. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.